Adversity makes you smarter. Adversity makes you a better leader. It's probably the most important thing because we're going into some very, very adverse times. I do this because it's proof I said it, if you know what I mean. Because everybody now is a prophet. The biggest stock market crash in history is still coming. And I said, I'm going to change the title to, it's here. This is the biggest crash we'll ever, ever see in our lifetimes. It's called the everything bubble. Everything's going to come down. And that's how you can prepare for it. So for most people, that's bad news. But as I was saying last night, crashes, everything goes on sale. And you can't get rich at that time. You know, like right now I'm in Hogs Heaven because Saks is always having sales. I'm in there shopping. But the most important thing this country and the world needs, as you know, Europe's in trouble. They don't think the EU is going to make it. China's in trouble. Japan's in serious trouble. The world's in trouble. It's in trouble because of lack of leadership. And as President John Kennedy said, leadership and learning go hand in hand, basically. I'm here to serve those who serve. We need more leaders, ladies and gentlemen, but this country sorely lacks leaders. I'm not Republican or Democrat, but I just can't believe what's going on in our government. I mean, how can they open the borders? How can they cut off the Keystone XL pipeline? How can this guy blame Russia, the president blame Ukraine and Russia for our problems? We have food shortages. Sri Lanka, which is the richest island nations in the world, is in rioting right now. So we need leaders. This is a time for you to become bigger leaders because I think people are kind of waking up that maybe it's our leadership that's the problem. There's a guy named Jordan Peterson who said, um, if you think tough men are bad, just see the damage a weak leader can do. We've had weak leaders all over the world right now. So how bad do you think market crash is going to be? How bad, how ugly can it get? The worst case, which I hope I'm wrong, would be civil war in South America. That's more than a crash, it's a civil war. We need new leaders immediately. So the worst it could get is civil war. I think the best we can express is probably a depression. We're already going into it. As I said last night, you know, what we do, we print money to solve our problems. And all that does is increase debt and creates more freeloaders, social welfare. I'm not against social welfare, but don't print money to pay for it. At the same time, our debt escalates. Our debt to GDP right now is 120%. At 90% debt to GDP, we're bankrupt. That means for every dollar we spend, we go deeper in debt right now. So our debt is now in the trillions. I don't know how many trillions it really I've heard it's 260 trillion. I don't know how they measure it anymore. At the same time, they raise interest rates into a recession. This has never been done before. So that's why I'm saying that somebody intentionally doing something to bring America down and the world down. And there's a video of Trump speaking to, I think, the United Nations or something. And he's telling the German contingency back in 2018, he says, don't trust the Russians. Don't depend upon the Russians. And now Russia can cut off their power. So there's something really goofy going on. I'm, I'm not privileged to find out about it. I just want to put some fear into you because the more dangerous the mission, the better you've got to be. I talked about last night how, you know, when I was preparing to go to Vietnam, I was a Marine helicopter gunship pilot. Our life expectancy was 30 days, 30 days. Now, most people said, that's not good. I said, well, it inspired me to become a better pilot. How does a person who has zero influence over the market, no control over interest rates at this stage of their life, how do they properly make the right moves to still be effective where the market's gonna go good, bad, or ugly? Stock markets, when they crash, go down in three phases. Boom, boom, boom. Phase one was bounce. It was called a bear market rally. This baby is going down, I hope, because I'm gonna get richer. See, the thing right now is if you're afraid, it's because you got bad advice in your head. You're operating on bad information from your mommy, your daddy, your college professor, your school teachers, whatever it is. I get stimulated thinking about a crash because I'll say it again, the tougher it is, the smarter you've got to be. And then it's your skill set. I'll tell you a quick story. When I came back from Vietnam, I said to my rich dad, I said, I want to be an entrepreneur like you. He says, well, you got to take sales lessons, two classes. I said, take real estate courses, which I did, and you have to know how to sell. I said, I don't want to know how to sell because my poor dad always says salesman was scum. That was my poor dad. That's why he's a PhD. Poor, helpless, desperate. 
he was a great father, but he was a poor man. So finally, I kept arguing with my rich dad. I said, I don't want to learn how to sell. And finally, rich dad said to me, he says, you know, I'm 25, 26 years old, prime of life, you know, Marine, all this stuff. He says, how's your life, Robert? Non-existent. He says, because you can't f***ing sell. <laughs> <laughs> this time it's different. This is the new economy. We are just coming out of the longest bull run in history, 11 years. Started in 2011. And in 2011, I made the biggest fortunes of my life because that was the MBS, mortgage-backed securities and the CDO crashes, the real estate crash. And I backed up the truck and I borrowed $300 million to buy the best real estate all across the Southwest. This is the largest, longest bull market in history. I look at some of these young kids, you know, and I own some Bitcoin, I own some Ethereum, but they're all saying the same thing. This time it's different, you know, and Bitcoin's crashed. And, you know, the Federal Reserve Bank, I can't believe that. I mean, people say, don't fight the Fed and all this. Well, my question to everybody is this, can the Fed print oil? Can the right. Fed print gas, I mean, gasoline? Can it print food? But everybody sits there and they've been brainwashed by Wall Street to go do as the Fed tells you to do. Well, you gotta be kidding me. Those guys are the three stooges, Janet Yellen, Biden, and Powell. You gotta be kidding me. Why would you listen to him? Volcker saying it's gonna crush, so he raised interest rates, right? So Powell is now channeling the spirit of Volcker. And you know, when Volcker crushed inflation, debt to GDP was 30%. And today it's 125% if you believe in the numbers. So if he channels Volcker, and the other thing about history will tell you this, there's never been a soft landing. It's more Fed talk. I've made more money in the last three years in my whole life. And so that's what I want to talk about with you today is that there's other ways of looking at investing, you know, but to think that Powell is going to save you when, as you may know, the reverse repo market is running at two trillion a day to right. two trillion a day. And people are listening to Powell. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> I own no stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. I do not touch paper. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I say people have been brainwashed by the Fed, the Treasury. Go to school, get a job, pay your taxes, get a high paying job, and invest in the long term, the well diversified portfolio, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs. It was in 1974 when I came back from Vietnam, a two tour Marine helicopter pilot. I saw communism at work. It was not pretty. And I come back in 1974, they passed ERISA. ERISA stands for 401k right now, or IRA. And I went, oh my God, they're funneling my generation, the boomers, into the stock market. And they don't know anything about money. And in 1974, the biggest exodus was school teachers suddenly becoming financial planners. I watched it in horror. That's the poor leading the blind. And today we have baby boomers who are hoping the stock market stays up in their 401k just as social security goes bust. You think that's an accident? That's all I'm saying. I'm just a Marine. I'm a dumbass Marine Lieutenant. Flew the gunship, went down three times. But today I listen to this bullshit and I go, oh my God, how can we be that stupid? Because we went to school, we did as we're told, don't fight the Fed, do what the Fed tells you, invest for long-term, well-diversified portfolio stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, and don't worry, Powell is now channeling Volcker. When the debt to GDP is 120%, you gotta be kidding me. So when they were dropping the interest rates, I thought I died and went to heaven because I buy apartment houses. I own 13,000 apartment houses. Every time the Fed dropped the interest rates, it jacked the value of my properties up, but I also improved the properties and I refinance out. So today I own no money in any of my properties. 13,000 units all throwing cash. They said in a bull market, even idiots feel smart. I'm listening to all these idiots, you know, after 2011, you know, the market crashed in 08 because the repo market went bad. And the repo market is the credit of uh, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns was bad. So they hammered Bear, anyway, it's a long story. My friends are all inside that world. But then when it came back out, they just started pumping money. And what they did was they kept printing more money to save a bad economy. It was already crashing again in 2011, but they kept printing money. And today we're gonna to pay that price. I use debt because debt is tax-free money. 
what I did was I rehabbed my apartment, 13,000 of them. I just kept buying more with the cash flow and I'd refinance out as interest rates drop. So I'm in good shape now. Then I took them, then I fro set all interest rates right now. So I use debt. And who's that guy that says live debt free? Well, that's his opinion. I don't do that. I don't flip houses. Remember all those guys were flipping? So everybody flipped. You no, know, they were stupid, stupid. When the moment you flip, you have a tax consequence. I never flip, I finance out this tax free money. Not only that, is when I started investing, I had to invest a 12% interest rate. I like debt and I like, I don't pay taxes because every time I borrow more money to float my properties, there's three types of tax breaks. I got appreciation, depreciation, and amortization. So I zero out. So my cost of money is, my tax on debt is zero. And I use that to offset tax in my income. When Biden took the Keystone Excel pipeline off, my oil I was selling from the ground, which is a tax break also, went from $30 a barrel to $130 a barrel. Today it's like 120. Oh my God, this guy Biden is going to bankrupt us. I'm not saying him, but there's somebody who wants to bankrupt because oil is the lifeblood of civilization. I worked for Standard Oil of California as a tanker officer when I graduated from school. I understand oil. I was on the Alaska pipeline and all this. I'm like, are you screwing us? So when he raises inflation, the poor and middle class will go broke. And that was just done as soon as he, he was being done before he took office. And so I'm looking at this, this guy's gonna sell America down the drain. I'm not saying it's him, but somebody wants us to go broke. And I'm watching this going, oh my God, so what else can I, so I have oil wells. I get tax breaks for those. Because I don't invest in oil stocks. I work for Standard Oil, but I don't invest in Standard Oil. I invest in the oil in the ground. I'm a wildcat. Everybody says don't do it. I don't recommend it, but I like doing it. Gold mines don't do it. I like doing it. There's more opportunity today than ever before, but not if you've been brainwashed into going to school, getting a job, paying taxes, live debt free, and invest in the stock market. This bubble right now is a bigger bubble than 2008. This is the everything bubble. You know, it's going to be not only stocks, bonds, but also credit. I mean, but it's more opportunity is going to come out of it. And that's what I'm saying. Be careful who you listen to because your best asset, but also your biggest liability are the ideas in your head.